It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and there's no love lost between these NFC North foes. It's the Chicago Bears and the Detroit Lions, and it's all up next. Coming to you from the venue that hosted the Super Bowl back in February of 06, welcome to Ford Field in downtown Detroit. Today we've got what's always a hard-hitting battle in the NFC North as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the Detroit Lions. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, these Detroit Lions, they won over a lot of people with the way they played under Dan Campbell last year. They started 1-6, found their stride, won eight of their last ten games, and nearly got into the playoffs. And when you think back to how they almost got in that final Sunday night going to Lambeau Field and beating the Packers, that tells you about the culture that's already been established there. All you need now is to watch this team continue to play. They're going to contend, I believe, in this season. And then for the visiting Bears, they want to wipe the slate clean from 2022. Now, working in their favor, we've seen plenty of teams in the NFL make big turnarounds from year to year. What can the Bears do to you know, just get back closer to maybe seven, eight wins, Charles? Well, they want to coalesce all this young talent that they're accumulating and guys that they brought in from the outside and start to build a culture, a feeling around this team that they know they can compete week in and week out. The punter Jack Fox has us ready to go, and we are underway here at Ford Field. Tyler Scott now from his end zone. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. So here come the Bears to take over on offense behind their third-year quarterback, former Ohio State Buckeye Charles, Justin Fields. And not only does he have all the skills that you're looking for as a quarterback, he's incredibly tough and plays the game fearlessly as both a runner and a passer. You provide a good running game around him and let him throw deep off a of play action, you've got an all-star in the making. Fields passing on the first play from scrimmage. And incomplete to open things up. He was looking to get that one to DJ Moore. And now it's second down. Here's Fields. And this is taken in by Darnell Mooney. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Fields to Mooney for the Chicago first. They'll set up a throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. And that might have been a situation where even though you don't hit on the deep throw, you at least put in the defenders' minds early in the game that we're going to press the ball deep against your secondary. And that can have a ripple effect on how they function throughout. Back to the airfields on second down. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. The improv act there, good for nine, and now they'll be looking at a third and short, third and one. They'll run with Herbert. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box, though. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Holding offense. And 
Yeah, so they get that one, Charles, on the right tackle. Yeah, oftentimes in that spot, you're trying to work against the defender, trying to set the edge in the running game, and you're trying to drive around and get your body twisted so that he can't get there. Sometimes your hands get too involved. Now, nowhere for Fields to turn, and down he goes. John Kaminsky, credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Now Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Komet. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And that'll force a bottom of third and 14. play call here 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing third and long it's fields and the Lions pressure too strong down he goes Aiden Hutchinson able to drop him for a loss of two and that will bring up fourth down now make that a second sack here on their first drive out defensively and not to get ahead of ourselves, but they're, they're on pace for double-digit sacks at this point. But they're going to have to find a way to tamp that down, aren't they? So if you're the play caller, you're telling your quarterback maybe some screens, maybe some draws, hard count, use your voice inflection a little bit, anything to try and slow that pressure down. Well, the Lions offense getting ready to go to work here and under center, a man whose career has been rejuvenated a bit as of late. In season number eight now out of Cal, it's Jared Goff. And at one point, the ascension of Jared Goff was really, really strong. Back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, took his team to the Super Bowl and came really within one quarter of winning it. But since that time, he's had bouts of inconsistency. And that's been the struggle for him as he tries to get back to the form he showed earlier in his career. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and ten at their own 25-yard line. Here's the former Bear. This is David Montgomery. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker, was the one disrupting there defensively. And that's exactly what offenses try to avoid by using motion and throwing different formations up. They hate when he can draw a bead on the play, get a running start, and make a big play behind the line of scrimmage as he did just there. Goff's throw complete there to St. Brown. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 14 yards that time for number 14. Okay, so now the question, how did he get that wide open? Well, we both know that he shouldn't because from the time they handed out scouting reports before this game, he was circled, starred, everything. Find him, cover him. But sometimes you can scheme a guy open. You put the receivers in a bunch. Maybe you move some motion. Maybe you put them on the backside of a formation, and all of a sudden you've got a better matchup. Every now and then, the offensive guys, they figure a way to get him open, even with everyone keeping eyes on him. And that's certainly a guy they want to keep trying to scheme open. Now a stoppage here for an injured player, and it's David Montgomery who is struggling a bit. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second down and one. They'll go with a rookie from Alabama. It's Jameer Gibbs. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like he'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. A gain of five. Good enough for the first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Going back to Gibbs on first down. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. From the 47 now, they'll work with a second and seven. They'll fake the give. Now gone. They'll find his rookie tight end, Sam Laporta. 
And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 31-yard line. A new set of downs after a strong pickup of 16 yards. That's his first catch of the game and an impressive one against multiple defenders. And how about that start? Really aggressive. Yeah, there was double coverage out there, but that didn't stop them at all. They went right at it and defeated it on that play. On first and 10, here's Gibbs. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. This second and four. Play action. It's gone. Complete. This is Mitchell. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. 18 yards that time to push him up first and goal. Another completion right there. And again, Charles, good time in the pocket. That offensive line on this opening drive been really solid. They've been more than solid. They've really tamped down the pass rush and kept him safe in the pocket. Able to look around, find his target, and deliver. He's got to make sure he tells the offensive line in the huddle. Thanks, fellas. Let's keep it going. Only a yard that time, second and goal. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short gain. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Again, it's Gibbs. And he takes this one in for the Lions. Touchdown. Jameer Gibbs, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Lions get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown strong in so many ways wasn't it partner their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal they've got to like the way that they started this ball game extra point by patterson up and good and it's now a seven nothing game now as they line up and kick this one away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. They'll start with the option. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Really held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on the first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Now second and nine. Read option. Here's Herbert. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. They'll see about converting this third and eight. From the gun, here's Fields. This one across the 35. Fields, we know he has the good mobility. He flashes it there as he scrambles for the first down. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger and bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker, and this early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. A give left side here for Herbert. 
Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice run defense presented there, and what I mean by that is discipline. Guys filling the right gaps in the right holes, no one over pursuing, and making a very nice play. Here now, second and nine from the 39-yard line. They'll go again with Herbert. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. Well, sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion, and I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw defensive end right in his face because he looked up and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. Fourth down, so they send out Trenton Gill. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. They've got the seven to nothing lead. Now they've got the football back after their defense got the stop CD. And you get the feeling if they could score here, they would really have all the momentum on their side. And you just wonder right now, is the quarterback and the play caller totally in sync? Are they of one mind that, hey, what worked last time? Let's keep doing it until they stop us. Or do they go to a different section in the playbook, show them something different? Either way, they want a repeat of their first drive. And they start things off with a carry by Gibbs here. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. On second down, here's Goff. And that'll be caught by St. Brown. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. From the gun, Gibbs will get it. And a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. But there are strong running plays, and then there are plays where you simply outclass the defense, and we saw the latter there. They ran straight up the heart of that front for an excellent game and first down. Simply put, you've got to put up more of a fight defending the middle. Otherwise, this is going to be a long game. A shotgun snap for gone. Well, he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. To throw on second down is gone. That's into the hands of Reynolds. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 19. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter action now from Detroit, and it's the homestanding Lions who have the football as they've got it with a first and ten. the red zone now. Goff. Complete to right. So the completion good for seven there. And that's going to bring up second down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. The key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Second down and three. To the air again. Golf. 
And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Here's Gaw. Throw to St. Brown, complete on the left side. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. They'll try and run for it. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. At first glance, I actually wasn't sure that he got it, but he ended up getting it by about a full yard. He certainly did, but it took a little effort, didn't it? Took some nice push, a little crease inside, and some determined running to make sure that he got the first down. To throw is gone. And he's got his man in stride, complete. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. On second down, it's Reynolds. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. On goal-to-goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens is either called pressure or what I like to call straight ahead pursuit a great read and they get to the backfield to make the play and that was a big chunk of yardage lost and they're gonna get him they bring him down to the sack back at the 16 yard line multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game now that was a passer's nightmare the front door totally shut down by the defense so he kept going backwards hoping to find another avenue of escape it didn't exist On fourth down, Goff to the sidelines, and Detroit has Riley Patterson out there for the field goal. This a 33-yard attempt. Patterson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, etc. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The Chicago offense set to get started. Nothing for him yet from an offensive standpoint, down 10 zip as they come up first and 10. To throw his fields. Trying to fit it into Moore, but it's intercepted. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. But Jameer Gibbs in the Lions offense getting set once again. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. 
So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Going up the gut, Montgomery. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. Here's gone. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. It's a pickup of six. So it's pretty simple, partner. You pick up a turnover, set you up in that some field position, the last thing you want to do is go three and out in this spot. Yeah, they would have had to settle for a field goal attempt, but now they keep those touchdown hopes alive. On first down, it's gone. That is caught by the And in for the Lions, touchdown. Sam LaPorta, a 24-yard touchdown. And his guys now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total, but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. Patterson now for the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. Just a four-play drive that time. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you now just you called can go. I think you just called a desperation time. I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating, to use a boxing analogy. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or do they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 17 yards on the play as they try to eat into this 17-point deficit. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball, but the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. And he's going to get it across the midfield stripe into Lion territory. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. On the option right is Fields, and holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. 
They'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. Well, he's had success running the football in this one, and that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And, Parker, I think the more you see him play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. And he will have the Bears first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. On first and 10, it's Herbert. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just flowed from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. Second and nine. Herbert wants more. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. 40 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right at them and right up the middle. Kirby Joseph there to drop him. When a drive goes this long, you have to give a lot of credit to the guys up front, those big fellas, because the offensive line is putting something together that allows them to continue to control the ball. And I know a lot of people think they get fatigued on a long drive. Actually, a lot of times the reverse happens. They actually get energized because they're controlling the ball and they're the ones dictating to the defense. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 14 yards in a Chicago first down. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Here's Fields. And his throw here is incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half. But the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. Now is second and ten. Out of the gun, Fields. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. And he continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. And these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance. Fields hit, and the ball is loose. hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Now here's Trenton Gill now. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. But Jameer Gibbs and the rest of the offense headed back out. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now gone. A quick throw there is incomplete. Trying to connect with Jameer Gibbs there. But it's going to be second down. Now 
it's gone. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Well, they approach this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Montgomery on the counter. And this play going to be stopped in its tracks at the 32 and obviously well short of the first down. Fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit. Back deep, Trent Taylor. It's a 45-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Bears take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And they had a long drive going last time, but it stalled out. But still, maybe something positive to carry forward from that last drop. Well, a few different things that you carry forward. Number one, as you noted, they were moving it pretty well, so that gives them a lot of confidence. The second part is keeps your defense off the field, mm -hmm. gives them a chance to rest up a little bit. And last but not least, uh -oh. you've taken a good look at what you've done on offense, noted where the weaknesses are, and you know when you want to come back to them. I like when you're organized with your points. Well Point done. A, B, and C. A well-executed 22-yard game. Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes it's just going back to what you know can work and finally getting it done. He's been a one-man wrecking crew these last couple of plays. This time, 18 more and a first down. And this offense has been a little slow to get going, but some signs of life here in this second quarter. They're moving it pretty good, and that helps the cause as well. Good yardage and another first down. Now a first down throw, Fields. To the right side, and he's got more complete. Second down and four. Now it's Fields. Open man right side is St. Brown. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. Throwing again is Fields. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Here's second and ten. Back to throw. Fields. And throws it on the move, but can't connect as that falls incomplete. They haven't been able to stop them so far in this series, but getting a nice little stand from their defense now. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. Santos' kick is up and through, and they're on the board at least here. It's now 17-3. to Well, still trailing here, but they do get the late field goal. Now their defense will try to keep this score right where it is heading into the locker room. Yeah, and trailing it to break, you obviously don't want to go in off of a negative play. Give them credit for that one. Finding a way to put points on the board. Give them any type of a spark, anything to build off of as they try and plan a comeback.
So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we've reached halftime here in Detroit with the Lions out on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. The Lions got a very strong performance out of their quarterback, Jared Goff. He's got a touchdown pass on the ledger as his guys were able to build a double-digit lead. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Seventeen three, the score as we resume action for the second half on EA Sports. Khalif Raymond now, and he'll be tackled just shy of the twenty-five. The Lions' offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 24. In motion goes the tight end. Third quarter starting with a run from Montgomery. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. This is second and eight. Goff now looking to throw. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. He was looking for Josh Reynolds that time, and it's third down. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Throwing on third. Gone. That's complete to the portal. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This is a nice job of just taking what the defense is going to give you on third down. You're not looking for a big play downfield. You just want to find something that can get you past the marker. They found it and were able to keep the drive moving. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the gun, here's gone. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. St. Brown in motion right. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. A couple of first downs on the drive already, as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Off play action. Here's Goff. Well, that'll be caught. It's St. Brown. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. A gain of 32 that time. It doesn't look like this defense found the magic elixir at halftime. This offense was rolling in the first half, and that's continued here in the third quarter. Another big play right there.
So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. They'll fake the handoff. Now Goff. Wright's got it. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Second and a couple. Goff. Sid Brown making the catch on the out route. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. They'll run with Montgomery. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. And now defensively, you have to look at this like the game's on the line. It's just a third quarter, but another touchdown given up here could really spell an end to their chances. So they need to toughen up and keep them out of the end zone. To throw on second down is gone. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Montgomery. Touchdown! David Montgomery, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Lions take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, that's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. now as they line up and kick this one away. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at the 20. Starting on the ground with Herbert pushing through the contact and up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Herbert now on the option. And taken down just shy of the 40. The defense thought they had that play covered, but it still got driven backward by those blockers. Those types of plays are a key part of any team's offensive game plan. It all starts up front in the trenches. Second and six. And off right side for Herbert. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take him in short, steady bursts. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Fields. Eluding the pressure right. Room here to run. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And it's going to be another first down as 
He'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 31-yard line. Second time in this game, Charles, the ball is squirted out from his hands. Luckily, his teammate was there to pounce on it. You're right. Got the lucky bounce, able to retain possession. You know, we often talk about the combine and why do we measure quarterbacks' hands. Is that really a big deal? It's for situations like this. Do you have the hands big enough and strong enough to hold on to the football while being jostled? Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Play action. It's Fields. But the man is commit the tight end. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Good work there. You're going to see on play action, they run an out route with the receiver on the outside and let the tight end work the seam in the area beyond him. A great concept, and it leads to a first down. Herbert powering up the middle. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. They work now on second and nine. Here's a give to Herbert. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to shoot for. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. From the gun, here's Fields. Buying time to his left. And he nearly got the first himself, but it appears he's going to be about a yard or two short. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. That looked great when he first took off because, in my mind, there was room to run, and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. They're going for it. Here's Herbert. And he's not going to get there. Might have even lost a yard. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And that will force a turnover on downs. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. Not able to punch it in. And if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high. Because mentally, you're saying, hey, you're in the red zone. We're thinking we're giving up three. We just want to give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've got to feel great about what they got done. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There was absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. So second and ten now here in the third quarter from Detroit. To throw is gone. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And he'll get this up to right around the eight-yard line. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, minicamp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. Here comes the Lions punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And this drive will start in enemy territory as that gets out of bounds on this side of the 50. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. And they've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. 
run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. He takes this for about six down inside the 40. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. Here now, second and four. A handoff for Herbert. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the ball too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. Throwing on third down, Fields. Well, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. Well, partner, given where that drive started, that's an excellent job defensively to force them into fourth down. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. You're three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. From the 23, here's second and six. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. This now a third and four. Goff now looks to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Goff on first down. And that's hauled in by St. Brown over the middle. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. to get to the line to run another play so we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close we'll return with more after this break you're watching the nfl on ea sports and from the 42 now here's second and two they'll try the middle with montgomery Fighting to stay on his feet past midfield. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show off their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage. They are powering through, and they're controlling this game. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That was a really nice play, being able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got he's to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free, and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. They 
try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Well, fourth quarter with a three-score lead here, Charles, but they're still going back to the air and looking for more points. Well, with this game well in hand, it's an opportunity for the guys to come off the bench and get a chance to play. And a lot of coaches, they want to run their full playbook no matter who's on the field. Here's Goff. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker. And the Bears are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. Well, that interception at least offers them a glimmer of hope here in the fourth quarter. Uh, it certainly does if their offense goes out now and makes it pay off by getting into the end zone. And if it does, then they get a chance to get back out on the field and try and do it again. Maybe they can force that offense into more and more mistakes and give them a chance to get back into this one totally. They have still a three-score hill to climb. We'll see if they can do it. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 49. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he's got Rome. 23 yards on the tuck and run. Well, that turned out better than most of the passes he could have thrown on that snap. The coverage downfield was excellent, but the containment close to home left him a backdoor escape, and they paid dearly for not locking up. And they'll fake the handoff. Now Fields. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. You know, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Back to the air, Fields on second down. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. And this is a rarity in the NFL, a 100-yard game on the ground for a quarterback. Even as those passers get more athletic and mobile, we only see about five of these a season. It takes a special set of circumstances for it to happen, and of course, a special player. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. Second down, they go back to Hubbard. A great move in there, but it only takes him to the seven. He's dropped there. 75 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Okay, didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. The Bears on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This time they face a third and two to throw his fields. And down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. That sack courtesy of Jack Campbell. This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. And we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to them. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback, twists and stunts. It's been a variety, and they've had no way of blocking them. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Bears tried it on fourth down, unable to convert, and the Lions will take over. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. Off in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. 
He'll begin by dropping it off to Montgomery. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Now a second and six. Again, they'll go Brown with Montgomery. And he'll take this one up to about the 23. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice, dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. Goff wants to throw on third and one. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. There are a lot of tough routes to try and cover. When you see a runner come out of the backfield and run this angle route, looks like they're going to the flat, and then they put their foot in the ground and cut back sharply inside, not easily covered. And then when they catch it, good momentum built up by them as well. And able to pick up the first. First down, here's the run to Montgomery. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Officially, no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. And Brandon, every running back wants to use their speed in order to get out in front of things. Sometimes you just have to be patient, let blocks develop. On that play, that didn't happen. Throwing on third, gone. He's got it complete to Gibbs. And he's going to be taken down at the 39, clearly short of the first by a few yards. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be first and ten Bears from deep in their own territory. Fields and the Bears now with a first and ten at their own 13. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Steps away to his left. Fields hit, and the ball is loose. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. The fumble on first down now. Here's second down. Now Fields. That's complete to Mooney. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So it was already a gain on the completion, but tack on some more with that penalty. Absolutely, and no matter what angle you're making the tackle from, you can't grab the face mask, and that's just putting your defense on its heels just a little bit more. So now factoring in the face mask, here's first and ten. Back to throw, Fields. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Levi Anzarike charging in and finishing off the sack. But collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 27 yards there, a first down. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but 
certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out and to that end a nice pass play there to push things downfield yeah and we know in this league a loss is a loss and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or boy something that feels a little bit cheap but they trim that lead down to just two scores that's still a benefit to this squad well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up big... All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Jack Campbell with a pick, and the Lions are going to have it here just past the 25. Well, I get it, Charles. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Down big, they just sent their receivers out, let it fly, but the defense, they were ready. Yeah, and there aren't too many people left in this stadium that couldn't see that coming, but that's not a major criticism at all because you had to try it. What you're hoping for is one of your athletes out-athletes everyone else and makes a dramatic play. Goff in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10 at their own 26. They'll go to Montgomery to try to wind some clock. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Back-to-back four-yard runs. Now look, hey, if they just do that all the way down, field ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. Third and two. They'll fake the give. Now gone. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. And he is going to have the Lions first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard game there on third and two. Now that's a big pickup right there. And so often we focus on how the quarterback's faking on play action. How about everyone being in on the deal and picking it up? Second, third levels. You could see them trying to recover. They bit. Worked out offensively. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. The job of any linebacker involves having enough strength to fight off a blocker and get to ball carriers. But in this case, I think we can safely say he beat him right off the snap to get into the backfield and make that play. So this one's over. It's a win for the Detroit Lions. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last point of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it's